ready to go, um, is herbs for digestive health. So that's what we're focusing on here. Uh, in the Chinese pharmacopoeia, there's about 5,600 herbs. So, and in some ways, all of them have something to do with helping the body to um, better digest and to work better. We're all better the way it comes up. But um, what I did was I picked five herbs here, and we have them steeping out on the front of the table. Um, and those five are commonly used herbs for treating digestive problems. They're not the five, or they're not the only five, or anything like that. It's just I picked ones that are more common to us. So I'll put them up here, and when you see them, you'll recognize them most likely. The first one in Chinese is called Quajir. Um, the word jir means the twig or the branch of. So on this, on the plants outside here, it would be the end of the branch. And so the gui branch or twig here. And this is cinnamon. In Chinese, they have two species varietals, cinnamon cassia and cinnamon bluroy, which is Vietnamese cinnamon. So these are the two main cinnamons that we use, and we use cinnamon as an herb, um, as a plant. The main thing that cinnamon does is that, one, it helps to promote sweating. For instance, when you have a cold or you feel ill or you don't feel well and you're cold and feverish and chilled and you got a headache and this kind of stuff, cinnamon is a great herb to help push that cold out of your body through your sweat and make you warm up. It also works to help, what we would say, warm up the digestive system. Warm up the digestive system and help the digestive system to function better and to work better. So um, the Chinese concepts of yin and yang, so um, yin and yang, which is the nighttime and the daytime. I was looking around to see if we had yin and yang characters in here, but we don't. Um, night energy, dark energy, feminine energy, this kind of thing, versus yang, light energy, daylight energy, male energy, this kind of thing. Neither one good or bad, just both different and useful. All right. And um, so we activate the warm up the digestive system. And so mainly that means we use yang energy to make the digestive system stronger. And then cinnamon twig also helps work in the bladder to help make or promote urination. So it works on the skin to help make sweating come out when we feel cold and trapped by cold, and it helps to make urination come out when the urination is trapped inside the body. And it warms up the digestive system. So we have cinnamon here. Now, on the front table, and this is interactive, so you can come up and look here if you'd like. On the front table, we have here cinnamon, and this would be the herb itself, and you can see it, the twig of it. It's, if you imagined it as a branch, put them all together, as a branch, you could see someone has just taken the twig and sliced it down the middle and made more surface area. Basically. So this year takes on, you can take it, look at it, it's no problem, touch it. If you smell it, you can see it smells cinnamonish, cinnamon-like. Okay. And we have some of that steeping here in our cup. So we're going to try just the cinnamon by itself. You can taste it, no problem, it's not, it won't hurt you. So we have just the cinnamon by itself steeping in the water. And then over here, this one, let's take that a little bit back. So in our cup, we have just cinnamon steeping over here, and what we'll do in a few minutes is we'll get a little sample of that cinnamon, taste it, and see what it tastes like from the liquid. So that's the first herb we have. The second herb that we have here to work with is a friend of cinnamon's, and that is what in Chinese is called xiong jian. And this word shun here means fresh, or to generate life. And this word jian here means ginger. Shun jian, yeah, ginger. So here we have fresh ginger. 
And if I show you here, there's uh, ginger. It looks just like the ginger you'd go buy at Fred Meyer or New Seasons or something like this. Um, same type of, same exact thing as that. Uh, in Chinese, the skin of it actually here is used to also help promote urination and to remove um, edema, for instance, from the skin. So if someone felt edematous in their tissues in their skin, you can use the skin of this ginger. Now, most of the time when we cook with it, like here's just the skin if I peel it off. Um, we peel off the skin. We don't use it right most of the time. But um, in, in Chinese, we use the skin as well. Mm -hmm. so we use both. I'm sorry. You say give me all Edema, water, uh, edema, too much water that the person uh, stuck its fluids specifically in the skin, it works like this. Uh, but ginger is also working to help, um, as we see over here. So it has a, also helps with this by removal of water. It also helps to warm up digestion by warming up what we call in Chinese the middle jiao or the middle area where we're digesting our food. It helps warm that up so that, hi, come on in, welcome. We're talking about herbs for digestive health so far. Okay. And we're going to sample some and taste it. You're welcome to come in and join us if you'd like. And if you'd like to just pass on okay. to it, feel free. Okay. <laughs> so the first one's cinnamon and then ginger is the second one. Warming up the digestive system helping strengthening your body's ability to digest so that you do a better job of digesting and then helping to um, treat things like, for instance, nausea or vomiting or feeling like I don't want to eat or these kinds of things. We can use ginger to help with this kind of stuff. So these two herbs can also be combined to work together because you can see both of them are warming up the digestion, both of them are helping to promote urination, and actually both of them also help to promote sweating. So we use those in patients who say get a cold and they feel cold and they can't get warm and their neck is stiff and they feel feverish and they feel achy and they have like normal cold symptoms. From the Chinese perspective we give them those herbs, put them in here. Once they're in the middle they push out the pathogen out of the surface and the person recovers and feels better. The third herb that we have here, that we have on our list of herbs, and that's ginger is the one I was holding, so you can kind of pass it around if you are unfamiliar with it, but ginger is, well, you can smell it, it's a very familiar herb in Western cooking as well, and in Chinese. The next one that we have here is called, in Chinese, cardamom, so shara and the cardamom, and shara, which is this one in here, and it's steeping, and first it's this, these seed pods that we have right here, okay, so you can take these around and look at them, come on in, we're talking about herbs for digestive health, welcome, you can uh, sample and try and hang out. Now, the shara, is this pod, but what you really want to do, if you were here before, you noticed that what I did was I took my uh, glass and I crushed it, because if you crush it and then you smell it, you'll smell the, the pod, the mm -hmm. card, so pass it around. You can't smell it quite the same through the seed pod here, it just, yeah. but the cardamom, when you crush it, it activates it and opens it up. It's very aromatic, right? You can smell that aromatic nature of it, so one of the things is when we see this herb shaman and we see how aromatic it is, and all of these herbs to a certain degree are very aromatic. Ginger, for instance, very aromatic. You can smell it. You know ginger is in something when you um, it's cooking because of the smell of it. And cinnamon also, very pungent, aromatic type of smell. So that aromatic nature of this helps that herb to penetrate through everything in the body. So the Chinese like to say, when it's dark and cloudy, for instance, like Portland is oftentimes, and it's overwhelmingly cloudy and there's not enough light, what we knife is something that will penetrate through all the clouds and bring out the sun, right? So Shaoran is that kind of herb where it's penetrating through this turbidity and this cloudiness 
and it's bringing out the sun. So it also, welcome, we're doing Shares for Digestive Health. We've got some samples up here we're going to be trying in just a few minutes. And um, so it also warms up the digestive system. So it warms that up. And its energy spreads and penetrates through, we call it turbidity, we also can call it maybe heaviness. You know, it's great here in Portland because most of us can recognize this feeling. You know, like, especially the last few days, we had those days that were really warm and it was 80 degrees and it was very nice and as soon as you wake up, the sun is already out and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm awake, I'm alert, I'm alive. And then the last few days, when you wake up, it's not like that. It's like, it's socked in and it's cloudy and you kind of wake up feeling a little like, oh, not quite as bright. And so the herbs like this, Sharan, are these kind of things that spread through that heaviness and help us to wake up. So here we're waking up the digestive system. The Chinese call it waking up the spleen, so that the spleen wakes up and is better able to what we call transform and transport. So it transforms everything you eat. You put stuff in, and that stuff gets transformed. But it's not just food from the Chinese perspective. It's everything that you take in. All your experiences, for instance, you're here with me. If there was a quiz at the end of this lecture, which there's not, there's not. <laughs> if there was a quiz at the end of this, then how much would you have taken in and made a part of you and be able to tell back to me or to someone else versus how much did you just hear and I can't use that information, I will get rid of it. Right? So it's that same thing with digestion. How much do I take in and put in and then transform that into something useful to me, like food does. We take food in, we make that food a part of us, it helps nourish our body. The stuff that we like out of we keep, and the stuff that we don't like, we send and move on. Okay? So cardamom helps to do that. The other thing cardamom does very special is that it does something that we call in Chinese, moves the qi. So when the digestive system is feeling stuck or not transiting food through. We eat some stuff and we feel kind of heavy or bloated or not quite right. You want to add things that cause movement to happen there. And so besides warming up and spreading through and penetrating through stuff that's stuck there, it actually helps that to move, basically moving down. So you put food in and it goes in your stomach and you feel satiated and not hungry anymore and then a little bit later that food transits through, and the next day, ideally, you wake up and you have bowel movement, and you got rid of that stuff, and now it's time to put more in. That's how it should work, right? So that's the idea. And these kind of herbs, like shaoren, that we use, are moving qi as well as warming things up. Okay. So we have shaoren, that's the one, and hopefully that's going around. Smell that seed pod, because it's much, um, much different smelling when you can smell the um, the carbon itself inside the pot. When you crush it, it opens it up. So the ones that we have soaking, I've crushed those. And we have other ones here. We'll let you do your own crushing in a little bit. There's two other herbs that we have here on our tea list. And the next one is we're going to put down here. In Chinese, it's called shen pi. We usually just call it citrus peel. But then, when I call it citrus peel, your natural question would be, well, which citrus? There's many citruses. Technically, it's a tangerine, I think, peel is the one that we're primarily using here. So citrus peel, the actual peel, the part that most of us throw away when we're done, when we're eating our fruit, is the part that the Chinese actually keep and use as the medicine. So like many things that we have in our daily life, we eat part of it, and the rest of it we don't use, but that part of it may be the medicinal part of it. So chen pi, or citrus peel, is also able to move the qi, that's its primary action. And then one of the things that it does is it helps to dry dampness and transform phlegm. 
So when you see this, one of the key things that you see is that this word transform is. Hi, we're talking about herbs for digestive health. You're more than welcome to come and sample some and hang out with us if you'd like. And uh, you can come and go as you'd like, no problem. You're welcome. We have some herbs up here to sample, and we're going to be tasting them here in just a little bit. And we're just covering some common herbs that we use for digestive health, like cinnamon, ginger, cardamom, and citrus peel. So when you see this here, it says transform damp. And I mentioned that's what the Chinese think the digestive system is doing. Is it's always in a state of transforming things. So now you have an herb that actually is helping it to do its job. It helps you to transform the food that you're putting in. So digestive health is how well does your body take what you put in and transform it into something that you need and how well does it eliminate what you don't need. If we just simplify it down to that, you have good health and good digestion when you feel fine when eating that, as opposed to someone who every time they eat they feel nauseous, or every time they eat they feel bloated, or they feel like they can never get enough food, or they never want to eat. All of those would be different kinds of problems surrounding digestive health. So, we're transforming and helping digestion, and we're mainly dealing with what we call dampness. From the Chinese perspective, the organs in charge of digestion, if we liken them to something in nature, hi, welcome, come on shore. Talking about herbs for digestive health. If we liken the digestive system in Chinese medicine as something in nature, the thing that in nature that it's most like is a combination of, you're welcome, is a combination of the sun and a swamp. So it's like a swamp in the sense that there's just water accumulating in the swamp, but it's not really that there's just water accumulating in the swamp. What's the swamp doing with all of that water? It's in a state of bringing that water in and moving that water out and, and cleaning that water. That's why if you go to water treatment plants or things like that around here, or you go out to the one that's out in um, Forest Grove, you can see it's built around a wetland, basically. So I call it a swamp, but maybe a more positive term would be wetland, because most of us go swamp. I don't want to go there. But hey, we'll all go hang out at the wetlands. That sounds like a very cool place to hang out. So swamp is when it's a pathology. Wetland is when it's a physiology. When it's working to help us, we call it the wetlands when it's working against us. It's like a swamp. So the digestive system is functioning like this. It's either helping transform water and keep everything pure and clean and everything growing, or it's accumulating too much water and it's too murky and it's too damp. Too much of this. And then that becomes phlegm. Now uh, this phlegm is, yes, the phlegm that you would see if you had a cold. That is called phlegm in Chinese medicine. But Phlegm is also more than just what you see when you have a cold. From the Chinese perspective, anything that is not digested or not transformed into something useful to you becomes phlegm from the Chinese perspective, from the digestive perspective. And that would be also food, of course, but it would be emotional states, things that happen to us emotionally that we don't transform and don't move past and don't make a part of us. Those things become cyanophlegmatic. And as soon as we have too much phlegm and dampness in the digestive system, our digestion bogs down. Now we have poor digestion. We can have loose stools, we can have diarrhea, we can have cramping, we can have constipation, we can have bloating, we can have all of those different kinds of things. And we can have those same kinds of things from an emotional perspective as well, if we're not transforming through our emotional stuff. So the herbs are working on both of those levels. So we're just talking about herbs for digestive health, and here we've got four of our five that we're covering today so far. Cinnamon and ginger and cardamom and citrus peel, tangerine peel. So those are the ones that we've been talking about so far. Yeah, sure. Would the peel of a um, kumquat also be like citrus peel? It would be like it, but it's different. Them, you know, Correct. Uh, yeah. So in an organic citrus we get at the health food store, we could eat the peel? Because I want to start eating the peel now. It's not actually that we're eating the peel. For instance, oh. we're not going to eat the peel. Oh, we're just tea making out. tea out of the peel. Oh, yes. okay. so, so I could use that organic You citrus. could, but you really want to use 
the specific ones, because okay. actually there's, I'm only giving you one here, but in the Chinese way of looking at it, there's probably eight to ten different citrus peels that we use. Uh -huh. And each one has a slightly different oh, function and a slightly different place in the body where it's going and working. So this one has specific actions to work in the stomach and the spleen, mm -hmm. digestive. Mm -hmm. Whereas lemon peel, for instance, or the citron tends to work in the liver, or the aged bitter orange tends to work more in the liver and more in the spleen. So each one has a little bit of a different work. So even though I'm simplifying it down to show, it takes a more of a practitioner who knows them to use them better mm -hmm. and to use them well to actually create better health. Mm -hmm. So although there are simple things, and that's one of the things we want to do with this, is to point out how simple things that you find in almost every kitchen, and certainly you would find in every kitchen in China generally, these kinds of things would be in every kitchen there. And in some ways, they're here in our kitchens as well, especially in Portland, where we tend to use these things. You can put cinnamon in things all the time. You can put ginger in things. Cardamom is not an unknown herb to us in this kind of way as a food herb either. The last herb is actually probably the one that maybe you know the most well, and, and primarily because of its medicinal uses. So this is the citrus peel here. So we'll kind of take it and. So it's dry. It's dry here, yes. Versus, so it's aged citrus peel versus on um, the fresh. And the fresh and the aged actually are different in the way that they're used. So you pass those around and take a look at the citrus peel. The last one, which is this one here, and I'll pass it around and uh, see if anyone can recognize it before we kind of look at it. Here. If you can recognize this, it may or may not be recognizable to you. Did you get one? Oh, yeah, you can see it. It looks like strawberry. <laughs> it's very similar to that. Um, it's actually what we call in Chinese, we call it shan jia. And um, its pharmaceutical name would be called kategas. Not ringing any bells yet. Okay. Bells. <laughs> it's also called, yes, it's called hawthorn fruit. Oh. Hawthorn. That's a so big one. <laughs> hawthorn is actually fairly well known if, if, in people that are doing home health or those kind of things because hawthorn is working in the body to help treat heart disease from the Western perspective. They're using it to treat heart disease and help improve circulation in the heart. And in Chinese medicine, that is one of the things that we see this herb shan jia helping to do. It actually helps what the Chinese say, so we put our list of things, I'm going to put this little like, uh, loop here, so shan jia is below that. So one of the things that shan jia does is it helps to, what we say, move and circulate blood. And it does that in all of the vascular system. So it helps increase blood flow in the vascular system. The other major thing that it does, and how we want to relate it back to digestive health, is that shanja is in a category of herbs called eliminating food stagnation. Hi, you can come on in. We're just doing a little herbs for digestive health. Very good for you. Just a little tour. Oh, yeah. Take a tour. Come sit if you'd like. Hang out. No problem. Eliminate food stagnation. So it's in the general category as an herb of eliminating food stagnation. So, for instance, you go out and you eat, you know, too much food. It's Thanksgiving dinner, and you, the table is abundant and full of stuff, and you eat and eat and eat, and your stomach, which is, you know, the size of your fist, basically, literally. If you want to know how big your stomach is, make a fist and put it there. It's about that big. So. How much does it take to make that fist full, right? And it expands and it can get full. So then next time you look at your plate of food that's in front of you, imagine that fist and think, this is going in that. And yes, it can expand, but remember that it's telling the brain that 10 to 20 minutes after it's already full, the signal is getting to your brain. So people overeating is potentially a great problem in general.
because they bring too much in there to digest. And if they put too much in there and can't digest it, then we need to help them warm up their digestion and transform their digestion because they may feel nauseous from eating too much food and they get too much stuckness feeling there and too much damp and phlegm accumulating and so we've got to try and help that. So we can prevent all of that by probably trying to eat smaller portions in general on one level. But food stagnation, we've eaten too much food, we put it in there. So one, Shan Zhao is working to do this, Kutegas or Hapa. The other thing that it does is in the category of food stagnation, it tends to have a better focus on meat and grease and fat. So it helps to break down meat and grease and fat better. Which, from that perspective, you can see why it's really good at helping circulate blood. And if it's moving and circulating blood, it helps decrease fat and grease in the blood, and why it's very good for lowering cholesterol. Shantai works very well to lower cholesterol okay, over, over the long haul. Now, these are our five herbs that we have, and we have them all up here in various states of, um, from the raw herbs themselves just sitting here, which you can come and take a look at, to them steeping. And what I did was, before you arrived, I put all of them to soak here in some hot water. So what I'm going to do is, everybody gets a cup. Hey, you're not, there's no requirement, but I'm going to uh, give you a cup if you would like to taste the herbs. So here's some cups. We have multiple things that we want to be able to taste. You want to taste? You get to. Cups for you, sir. And one so we've got all the herbs up here. So one of the things that um, I wanted to do was I give you a little bit of a little bit more hot water here. Okay. I'm just going to give you a little sample. Don't worry about all the uh, little floaty stuff in it. It's not bad for you. <laughs> this one? Yeah. See if you can see what this one is. Okay, we'll tell you what they are afterwards. The main thing that we want to do first is I just want you to taste it and see what you feel. Does it do you feel it in any particular place? Does it strike you in any particular kind of way? Do you feel it in your body in any kind of specific place? Okay, so this is the first herb here. There you go. So, just taste that, see how that one feels. Okay. Yeah, and if you, know, if you can smell it here, you really get a sense of what it is. So it's light, not too much, not very strong. Now it's only been steeping for a few minutes and it just had hot water put on it. If we were truly preparing this to be medicinal, we would boil this for 30 minutes and um, strain off that liquid and reboil it again for another 20 minutes bind it together. Plus, the other thing that we do with Chinese medicine is that we're not using them as individuals as much. Like in the Western perspective, if you have a headache because you somehow have ibuprofen deficiency, then the doctor gives you ibuprofen in order to remedy the fact that you're deficient in ibuprofen and your headache will go away. And being somewhat facetious, because that's not exactly what they think. But you, we're using these herbs not as individuals so much as combinations. We're putting them together in a combination, what the Chinese call formula. And the word for formula in Chinese is this character, which means something like that. Um, it means it's fun, and what we usually say is fungi. But the word formula, fun, means to have a direction to go in. Where are we taking it? So if, for instance, your body was like it was living in a swamp and your digestion was poor because you were in a swamp. We could take you to, for instance, directionally with our herbs, 
where might be a good place to take you? We could take you to the desert, for instance, right? Birdwood. You would go from this swampy place to a desert place and we'd dry that out. Now, we wouldn't necessarily leave you there forever, have to take herbs forever. We would just take you there while we get that system restored, dry up the swamp, make it function more like a wetland better by applying desert direction to that. Or the opposite, the person's too dry, skin is dry, hair is dry, nails are dry, all of that kind of dryness, then that person needs more swamp, right? So we can take them in the direction. So the Chinese word that means um, formula, this character, direction, fun, and where are we taking them? It's really a picture originally of um, two boats that are tied together. And the boats are traveling together downstream. So that you are one boat and the herbs that you're taking, the combination of them are another, and together you're traveling somewhere to get to a different place, a different state of health. All right, so that's the first one. Cinnamon was that herb, in case you didn't guess. Right, it's the next one here. So that's why in herb books they use in a formula, a Chinese herb book, they'll say transporting, like this is a transporting herb. So you just Correct. explain why. Right, because, because they do. It's that. like the boat, two boats. It's really neat. So, good. so here we have another one. Um, just that way I, I'm not going in order up there, so that it's, this is the clues factor here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Just a little clear cinnamon and body touch. And then this one for you. And you're all welcome to have more. I'm just pouring out. I don't want to make you drink a huge amount. So what do you think about sala like not cooking vegetables? Say that again? Uh, sala, like uh, raw vegetables? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of raw food, just in general, because if you think of food that's raw or food that's cold, from the Chinese perspective, when someone eats food that's raw or cold, the body first has to, because your body temperature is about 98 or so degrees, actually most people in modern times are much lower than that, their average body temperature is only about 97, but separate from that, your body temperature is about 90 some degrees, and you put in something cold, the first thing your body has to do is heat that up to the same temperature as your body, which requires, from this perspective, yang energy, this yang energy that we're talking about. So that's the first thing it requires. Second thing that it requires is, if it's raw, then your body has to do the cooking of that food, which requires more yang energy. And the digestive system, which if we likened it to a person, the digestive system is like a mother. <coughs> a mother who's, as some of you who might be mothers or have been mothers know, their job is never done. No matter what it is that they're doing, there's always more to do. Do the laundry, take this out, get this, make lunch, go do this, go shopping, pay the bills, deal with him, do this, take that. And that just goes on every day, ad infinitum, no stop to that. That's just the way it is. So that system, mother, tends to be tired all the time because mother is doing all this, and if we liken it to the digestive system, it's similar. So the Chinese always, even when they eat raw food, if you go in China, for instance, not so much at Chinese restaurants here, but if you go to China, for instance, the very first thing that they serve you, no matter what, no matter where you go, is they bring out just a bowl of warm broth. So that the first thing you're doing is you're consuming warm liquid in order to warm up your digestive system. So that you're making that warm first. And then once it's warm and it has power there, you can add other things to it that's healthy. One of the great things that you can do in general to help strengthen your digestion from the Chinese perspective is just in the morning, a little bit of ginger tea. Just helps strengthen your digestive power, like in the morning, by helping it with a little bit of ginger. 
and giving that young energy to your digestive system. So that's, you know, raw food in general is a little bit harder to digest. Mm -hmm. And there's certain times of the year where it's a little easier to digest that, but in general that's how we would think about it. All right, so we've gotten through a couple. What's that last one that we just tried? Any guesses on that? Orange peel. I don't know citrus peel. That was the citrus peel. You can taste oh. the citrus peel there. So let's try the next one here. We'll see what this one is. Stomach has heat. It has an infection. Is it like still considered to ginger? Um, if the stomach has an infection, potentially it could be good to drink ginger because ginger is antibiotic, has antibiotic actions actually on a pharmacological level. All right, we try this next one, see what this one's going to taste like. So remember, our, our plan with all of these is not only what do they taste like, but see if you feel them differently. Oh. See if the herb, yeah. <laughs> this tastes like Chinese herbs. <laughs> I was thinking of the uh, big snack over Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it smells like it. I'm going to get the cardamom. Cardamom. Yeah. Yeah, this one's more, this one's the cardamom. And, yeah. this, and it has that, but that flavor that you're tasting there is that strong flavor. If you associate with anything up here, it's this, right? It's opening, it's penetrating. You can feel it. Like, ideally, when you feel that, it feels like my ears are open more, my eyes are open more. It, first, as Westerners, we generally do focus on how it tastes, right? The taste. But if you focus on how it feels, does it feel like it opens up your chest or close it down? Because it might do either, depending on you as an individual. That's why the medicine isn't one size fits all. If you have a headache, you take aspirin. It's more set up where you as an individual have a headache. If all of you, all six of you, came to see me in my office complaining of headaches, it's highly unlikely that I would give all six of you the same thing. It's more likely that I would give all six of you different things six different remedies. Because if you look around, you all look different. You're all at different ages, you're all different genders, you're all different this, you're all different that. You all have different things, and it's not the same reason that you would have it. So it's the same kind of thing here with these herbs. This one's opening up a little bit. This is the cardamom, not your favorite one. That's why I put it in the middle. Because then we can move back. Start with the good ones, move to the bad ones. And it's really then you can come back to the good ones. Yeah, it's good. Is cardamom a tree or a shrub? Do you have to know how it grows? Well, there's different types of cardamom, actually. Um, there's shrub and kind of uh, more bush like ones of those, but there are some actual types that are more um, tree oriented. So, again, when you think. Cardamom, where we think from a Western perspective, and there's many different ones that we would think about using. Is it a, it's a tropical plant? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we only have one left, so this one must be ginger, that's true. But it's an easy giveaway no. for this one because that's not good. Yeah, it's not yeah. Yes, you can get some more of any of the ones you want, no problem. 
So if you smell that too, the ginger is very strong, you can really kind of taste it. So very light, very mild there on the ginger. The longer that you would steep it, the more strong it could taste. Believe me, ginger can taste as strong as the cardamom and the cotegas as far as its flavor, but um, it's, I only put a little in there because it definitely can be overwhelming. All right, so now let's do this next part of this experiment, which is to take all of those herbs that we just tasted and we have them all together here as one. Is this an actual formula? Um, it is, but it is kind of, yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's a formula that's been oh. modified, is how we would say it. Ooh, it's really good. Mm -hmm. So then you see we get all the different flavors kind of somewhat interacting together. There's a difference between, it's not just all of these parts that are acting individually. Oh, you got a little uh, debris with your other side. It's not just the sum of all the parts, it's all of the things interacting and working together. So you can see all of the flavors kind of coming together and as you feel the cinnamon kind of right away, you can feel that um, citrus peel and the hawthorn, and then behind it there's that carbon flavor, which isn't so bad when you put it in with the formula, right? Now the other thing that we have here is I have this pack of our cousin Chinese medicine. Not everybody wants to take home all of these bulk herbs like this, crude herbs, and put them together to boil on their stove and cook them up. It always makes the roommates and everybody else go, what are you doing in the kitchen, <laughs> right? Because you're making this stuff up. So, and it's not easy in this busy type of lifestyle where people are very busy and they're having um, lots and lots of work to do. This is an hour-long process, generally. You gotta soak the herbs, you gotta cook the herbs, and not you know, cook them while you're watching TV. It's not the crock pot method here, it's more of like actually cooking your medicine. So that takes time and it can take time, and when people have busy lifestyles, it's often difficult to do that. And so the Chinese have a system here where they've made someone has done the cooking for you and made up the liquids. And once they've made up the liquids, they've taken those liquids and they extracted that liquid and encompassed it with a starch medium so that now the liquid is kind of bound up in the starch. So then I can take those and put it together, for instance, here in my little cup. There it is. And this is what, I'll pass this around, you can kind of take a look. This is the granules there, and you can see they're different colors inside. So they need so that's the same thing that you just drank. That's the thing we just had. There are all the herbs together. It's just someone's taken them, boiled them up, and then basically what they do is they take it, spray it into a room, and at the same time that they're spraying that into a room, they spray a starch medium into that room and capture it up. And then they put that together. So that's what it looks like there up close. Now here, I'm gonna we'll do the next phase, which is Give everybody just a little drop of water as we do it, okay? So, uh, so this is super digestible. Okay. So this one, uh, you may or may not want to drink it all. <laughs> uh oh. No, no, I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> remember which one is it? Yeah, that's right. So I'm, I'm filling it up in a way where it's a little bit stronger, um, you know, because it's much more concentrated here. I made this more of like a medicinal dose. Okay, so this is more like um, an actual dose that we would say. This would be more of the level of potency that we would say, because I put three spoonfuls here 
of the granules into that little cup. So that would be a highly concentrated dose, much more like a medicinal dose right here of what you're getting there. Okay. It tastes good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I cut yours with water. Yeah. You, you can really taste the ginger in the back of your throat on this. It's very strong there. Okay, like if you don't cut it, it's pretty strong. Alright, so that's that's the all of them combined together. Now I have one other thing here, which is an actual bulk decoction of herbs that we made together, that they put together at the school or I cooked it myself this morning. Our scholar back there, Beth, she put it together this morning, cooked it for you at her house. And that formula is called which in Chinese means this character here. Guajer is cinnamon twig, and then this means decoction. It's a, literally a picture of, on this side, water. Draw that better. So water. What kind of water? This kind of water. Water with the sun in it, basically. This is a picture of sunlight energy coming down. In fact, like the word yang means this. Yin yang, like sunlight, yang. So water that is yang, or yang water, so we're drinking it as a decoction. It needs to be like this. And in it, it has the following five herbs, which we call guajer, guajer, cinnamon. An herb called xiaoyao, peony. Specifically here, we're using the white peony as opposed to the red. It has shenzhen, which we were already tasting. This is fresh ginger. It has the herb dafao, jujube, which is easier to know as date. And it has the herb licorice. And this particular licorice has been this done to it means which is baked with honey. This is the standard remedy in Chinese medicine for everything from the common cold to heart disease and mm. everything in between. You can use some modification of this formula to treat that. Mm. Every possible level of disease from a Chinese perspective can be treated in some ways with this generally. If not by itself, then certainly through modification. There are formulas to treat heart disease that have this in it. There are formulas to treat cancer that have this in it. There's formulas to treat constipation that have this in it. There's formulas to treat the common cold that have this in it. There's formulas to treat digestive problems that have this in it. There's formulas to treat my menstrual problems that have this in it. Basically, any kind of thing that, hi, welcome, come on in. Anything that's going on, we could possibly potentially treat it with this point. All right, so now, how many of you have something left in your cup? None? Oh, well, okay. So what I'm going to have you do is, this was the water. Just come on, bring your cup up, and we'll give ourselves a little decoction of Wait a time, which is actually the warmed up decoction here. This is actually the remedy, all put together in bulk, not granules, not any of the other stuff that we talked about, not the individual herbs. Uh, we'll put this in. Now, I'd love to give this one to out, folks, because the main reason why is because when they take it, they go, oh, Chinese herbs are so good. <laughs> Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. This is the one you made? Yeah. Oh, geez. And the caffeine? Yeah. Is it got caffeine in it? Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs>
No caffeine. All it has in it is stuff on the board here. Cinnamon, okay. peony, ginger, dates, and licorice. How does licorice grow? Uh, from here it's using the root. It's a root. It's a root, yeah. Here we're using the root. A part of the date is used. What? The fruit part of it. The, the, so the sugary fruit part of it. So each one of these herbs is different, and you could write a doctoral dissertation on how this formula is combined together, because from the Chinese perspective, it's somewhat of a genius combination. So you have the herb Quasar, which is cinnamon, and is a yang herb that activates yang, and yang's energy makes sunlight happen in the body. And you have peony, which does the same thing, but to the yin of the body, helps generate the yin of the body, helps the moonlight shine in the body. So you've got sun and moonlight harmonizing together. Mm -hmm. And those two herbs, when they work together, create what the Chinese call yin qi and wei qi to function together. Your defensive qi, the qi that protects you from all kinds of invasions of sickness of any kind, is protecting you. And the yin qi, which is called the nutritive qi, is generated as well to protect you. So for instance, if you put it in terms of like a military operation, the defensive chi would be the soldiers that are out doing the protection of the outer realm, right? The yin chi would be the people who are giving them supplies, ammunition, bullets, food, etc., etc. Right? Without the people that are giving us food and supplies, we wouldn't do a very good job of defending. Without someone to defend, the supply stores would be stolen. Right? So these two herbs are functioning just like this in this formula. These two herbs are mirrors of these two and are actually doing the same thing. So the ginger is working to activate yang and help the yang to work, and it's working to help build the defensive chi. This is actually working to strengthen the yin and the nutritive part of the body. So you have two that are focused on that, two that are focused on this, and this one which harmonizes them all together, helps them coordinate their efforts better. The brilliance of this formula is not just in that, but it's in the color. This one's red, this one's white. This one's white, this one's red. So there's a signatory law that's followed by this. The red one is yang, this one's yin. So now you have balance between those two. The two red ones treat yin and yang. The two white ones treat yin and yang. Probably more than you bargained for or needed to know, but that's the idea behind it energetically, how it's working to strengthen the body against any kind of disease. The beauty of it, though, is in the fact that if you look at it, it's all food-grade substances. So with the simplest of things, from a food-grade perspective, you're able to take those things and strengthen the body harmonize the body and increase the body's ability to nourish itself and protect itself from disease. That's the beauty of this formula here. And the great thing about it is generally most of us would agree that it tastes okay, right? It tastes all right, this one? Yeah. Not too bad. Okay. So pretty easy. Any questions, we'll leave it. I, I, I have no idea what time it is. So. Oh, it's one o'clock. Oh, perfect. Jeez, as if I knew what I was doing. Okay, questions, any of those, yes? Can you go into a store and buy it? Well, you can buy cinnamon, you can buy ginger, you can buy dates, not this date generally, the specific one that you we're using, probably not this specific cinnamon yeah. generally. <coughs> so you can use these herbs from the food grade perspective here because you can buy most of them, and certainly ginger is the same. Um, and you can buy them, but again, I come back to the same thing we talked about before, which is that in general, one of the things we don't want to do is just start prescribing, because as she was saying, it, ginger is great to help strengthen the yang, but if the person has too much heat in their stomach, for instance, and I would diagnose them with stomach heat as opposed to stomach cold, if I gave them ginger, I might make that worse as opposed to better because they might be too hot there and they need cooling. 
right? So just because this formula works to treat everything from the common cold to heart disease doesn't mean that it works in every single situation that one human could face. So that's why it's better left to a practitioner who knows, as opposed to, oh, this herb's good for it, let's take that herb. Oh, this herb's good for that, I'll take this herb. I have a sign in my office that says, success of treatment of your case depends on which one of us is the doctor. <coughs> right? So if you're treating yourself and self-medicating and doing everything, and you have a better idea of what to do, then Obviously, you don't need to come and see me, right? or certainly you don't need to pay me to do it in that sense. So that's it's that idea. It's very helpful, very interesting, and we can use them in such a way. And I would use them more as I laid them out before, right when we first started. Where it's very good for helping ease the digestion, nausea, that kind of stuff. Cinnamon is very good to help regulate blood sugar, those kinds of things. It's very good for these kinds of things. Licorice can raise the blood pressure and lower the blood pressure depending on the person it's being combined with. These two herbs, the peony and the licorice together, are excellent relaxant herbs. Severe menstrual cramping, severe abdominal pain, those kinds of things, very good to help relax that pain and ease that from happening. Very, very effective. So there's a number of things that we could use them for, but I wouldn't just prescribe them out to my class. Because maybe we're talking about medicine. Food is medicine. Alright, anything else? Feel free to come and try some more samples, take some stuff home. There's information about the college or what's there. And there was, but there's, there's discount there's cards. Discount, discount college cards for treatments at the clinic, which is just one block over from here. Um, so you can get a discount on getting treatments there. And um, thank you very much. Thank you.